How's it going, Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another episode of Previously in Dragon Ball Super, where we go over the week's news in one juicy video at the end of the week, so you don't have to go through the week, looking bit day by day to find out what's going on. You can see it in one video, so it's easier to digest and see. And today we're currently on episode 35, so it's quite a few I've been going over. It's been going on for a while now, this series, just to help out anybody who's looking for the, good new for the news for the week. And with this week, we did get quite a bit of news. So we got we got information about the Game Fest events with the dates and locations. And I'm going to be going over the UK ones because I run on UK. But I will have a link down below that can give you the uh, take you to well, it take you to the Europe one because I'm I'm from Europe, so it look it look it goes straight to Europe one for me, where you can have a look at the ones uh, all the dates for your area. And we also finally got the set 16 ban errata and limited list update for set 16 so let's get to it see what it was what happened and uh the news this week so starting off with the uk game fest dates and locations we have four which is pretty good it's quite nice we had four so it means uh and they're all in, they're all in person as well so everybody was like m shouting out on the groups and stuff so they wanted irl events and now we finally got some so there's no reason for anybody not to have a reason to not go because we want IRL events. They're big ones with good prizing and participation and stuff. So if you can make them, try and your hardest to make them or just go. There should be no excuses here. And with this one, we've got uh, so for the four we've got, we've got Living Realms in Castleford, which I think is actually in Leeds City Centre. I think uh, with this, so it's Living Realms this is Castleford, but they're hosting it at a new venue in the Armouries. The Royal Armoury is in Leeds City Centre, so that's going to be happening on the 19th of March. And unfortunately, we got two on the same day, which is a bit of a bummer. When we have the Dice Cupping Nottingham hosting one on the 20th, and one in Dark Sphere at London hosting on the same day, the 20th. So we've got one whole weekend where you've got Living Realms and either a Dark Sphere or a Dice Cup, so you've got a weekend of uh, Dragon Ball, which can be good. And then we, last week, and the week after that, we've got one in Firestorm Games Cardiff on the 27th. So pretty good. I'm going to try and go to as many as possible and the ones I'm trying, I'm going to try to go to is Living Realms, Dice Cup and Firestorm because then it's easier for the Living Realms and Dice Cup to go up and back and on the way back if you're not in them. But it is just a bummer that we have two on the same day because that's going to conflict with dates, uh, like with attendance because the fact that in order to get the maximum prizing you need 128 people to attend to get the top 28 if you don't get the winner, um, the winner stamp secret rare. So we're hoping if you if you, so if you're in the UK and you're seeing this, or you know about the date about these events, make sure you go, go as many as possible because it's so worth it, and it's just to show that we do want events and finally got IRR events, not webcam, and they will be testing out best of one still even though they're in person, but they'll be testing out a new best of one uh, format where you get the pre site before. So when you start a game, you throw it on your leader, and then after seeing what either player's leader is. Both players have a chance to side, have a minute to side deck uh, before playing out the best of one. So that's that's really good change. Hopefully, it can get implemented for every single webcam event online uh, when he's doing it again, because webcam is still a good way for people who can't travel or it's hard to travel for to still play. And it's gonna be nice having that, and also quick, easy games as well. And then that is it for the game fest event. So now we have the ban limit and rattle list update. So with this, we had three cards that are banned, one that is limited, and three that is, uh, five that are ratted. And with all of them, Banner gives a reason for why this is, and it helps uh, like change the meta now. So the first one we got is one from way back in fact, uh, set three. I think there's two for set three they got hit, and that is unrelenting assault trunks. So this is gonna, this is going to be a hit to Gogeta Zeno. And the reason why that they give us anyway is this card provides dis disproportionate advantage for leader cards that can send cards directly from the deck to the warp in large quantities. Since this card is rarely used outside of uh, such interactions, we decided to ban this card. So that's basically with Gujita Zeno, its thing is doing Union Fusion. But how it does Union Fusion is sending cards from the warp to drop for its materials, 
so you'd lose nothing from hand which is really good and one of the perks of it is the leader allows you to get that set up by on the unawakened side it allows you just activate main send up to five cards on top of your deck to your warp and on the awakened side when it attacks you get a draw one and do the same thing so with this card in your deck it, allowed, it meant that if you did that effect and hit like one or two of these you get add them to your hand because they're going from because this effect is what it's sent from warp or what it's sent to the warp from your battle area deck you add it back to your hand so the leader can gain you advantage just through that which is pretty uh pretty good for the deck and now this cuts down on that small advantage and an overarm option you can still easily replace this with the the trunks overarm which is the same overarm three and uh, power as well from set seven that allows you to warp one the draw two from, warp one from your hand the draw two which still helps with the overall strategy and gives you an overarm this just provided you with advantage off the leader cards effect to warp the top five and also made it so you always had a consistent overarm every turn because of this so overall good hit not the, like not too bad a hit to the deck it's excellent functions uh, just yeah trying to curb down the advantage from a lot of the top decks given that the last format was Cell Surge, the Gogeta Zeno and Icarus that was the top decks of the format, the top three and in the next one is another deck uh, card from set three being Foo Shrouded in Mystery so this is never this is a really big overarm because it requires 10 in drop and 6 energy to drop it but like shuffle effects when it with his auto even things that went into pending because of its wording and it was a, is a good is a good game ender for a lot of decks like it's only really good in a format where it can go to late turns because like more uh, faster more like kill like earlier kill kill heavy decks like um we had formats where you kill up to turn f turn three is what you normally uh kill and um, if with formats where it goes on later we get to six seven this was a really uh great card so depending on the format but currently we have a format where this card is a great card and the reason why and abandon it is because this card creates a powerful game ending ability for any deck with low potential for opponent interaction because of the fact that it shuts off all your opponent's skills until the end of their next turn and they said additionally newer cards have bolstered the power more than it was originally intended and it's in order to encourage other strategies based on new card types and improve player enjoyment they've said to ban it so i know a lot of people were like uh shouting for this to be banned or hoping this got hit it's not I don't. I didn't feel it. Didn't feel it was banned or whatever. I think this is one that they banned because of the outcry of players not being able to deal with it. Because it's only good in a format where it goes later on, and albeit there's only really blue and yellow that have good options to it. But really, this card isn't as impactful as it seems um, if it's on its own. Like if your opponent has built up a board and you haven't managed to control it and bring it down a bit then it's problematic but if they just drop this and they've got nothing else on board apart from a leader swing to attack with it's not that problematic unless you put yourself down the low which is all based on um the strategy involved getting your opponent into a situation where this can finish off so this doesn't seem like a great ban for me like uh didn't really need it but i imagine with a lot of outcry bandai like they've done before just cave to the player base and just banned it for that reason then we have the next one being a cell surge leader so the first the last of the three bands was the cell surge leader and the reason by, behind this is this card is non-interactive leader with a long standing present in competitive play that is true it doesn't really is one of those deck it's a leader that for it since it's released has been non-interactive like really non-interactive which is a uh, and it's always been in the meta because of how decent it is not because of itself but because of the cards that come up they're like cards that go around it and in order to encourage strategies based on new card types and overall player enjoyment just like with foo ban they decided to ban this card so this wasn't i don't feel that this was a good like this is a good hit to curb down hand destruction because it, it, it was a very strong hand destruction deck that was very uninteractive and very unfluent to play very strong but just horrible for every anybody to play against it but hand destruction is kind of needed to help deal with uh like put on check some decks that are just draw like basically just hold, hold back advantage and don't do much and this is this was a good way to check that like i feel like instead of this they could have just errated uh ribrian to just be a mono green leader so that way mono green like green still has their identity of hand destruction but it 
pulls down the power of this so it's not as bad because really as I said it's not the leader that's an issue it's more the cards that go around it that you could take advantage of like any um cards that trigger in the drop this was easy to do because it just on this front side you can look at top five cards grab any cards you draft to your opponent grab any card from them and to your hand then discard any card so you can set up cards in the drop the use effects to gain advantage that way and but then this is just proving with Bandler that they uh, overdid it with most assault by over overdid it a bit too much with the assault leaders or made him like not so great like we have this is the third surge leader that has been hit in some way either being errated so it's unplayable or being overall banned in general so that's three out of the six well the three best ones have been hit and the other ones are either completely unplayable or just enough balance where they're not great or themed like heavily themed so I didn't feel that this was a good choice but it makes it easy like it opens up for more hand destruction decks that are more interactive I agree with that that it wasn't interactive now every hand destruction decks to be a bit more inter interactive it's like Raditz has to attack to get that you got OG probably as attack things like that where it doesn't have to attack to give your opponent advantage and just rip it apart so they gain nothing they're just constantly losing stuff so that's a decent hit I feel if in that sense it was a decent hit but really I feel they could have done a different like a better way of doing it I feel they've gone the wrong route again with this and now that is it for the ban ones with the limits we have one being a power of the super saiyan so yellow is one of those uh, is like is in line with blue really where it's more it's not got the greatest in terms of archetypes like each color like green is the one that has the archetypes where they, it seems like they just test them out to see how they go and they're always like very bad archetypes like a very few good archetypes come through like you OG Broly you've got King Cold you've got the um, Surge Q things like that and you get so much like our typical green decks but then uh, it's more thematic for them then you got red which is a lot of uh, some pretty good red cards but there is also another one which is like a bit thematic in that sense like they asked where they put in the uh, like the better themed decks to try on red but then reds almost normally heavily um repelled by blue and then when it comes to blue and yellow they managed to make it like blue to make a combination of theme decks and uh good blue decks which is more blue good cards dot deck which can mix into um, blue normally mix into the every colors better and in yellow it's literally just a good card dot deck and that's what it's been like for most of the uh most of the game for yellow it just kills and he keeps getting good yellow cards incorporating some cut some cut some stuff on other colors and this is one of the best uh good dot good dot deck yellow cards and this one the reason why they tried to limit this is because it provides the following advantages at no cost being restricting your opponent's battle card and unison card based strategies you draw a card and also you allow the player to utilize effects that require resting like at no cost so to properly balance the utility for yellow decks decide to limit this to one copy per deck which is not too bad like it doesn't do much make much difference like uh you can still have it it just means now if you've got that one copy you have to be very careful of how you use it because you can't otherwise you're just wasting it if you use it at the wrong time so a decent hit for yellow i don't think this is enough to bring it down a peg because it's always has been for most of the game the top color of the deck of the game and now we have the five erratas so the first one we have another one for yellow being uh sun gohan higher dragon boundless friendship so it's the one that this is a deck that's nicknamed icarus because people don't like that it's called higher dragon because in the english dub it was uh yeah it's called icarus the dragon and this received two erratas on it so well two rats on one card but it's still one of the five erratas so for its activate main which is uh once per turn draw one card then play a yellow skillless with entry cost of one from your drop area this now has been errata so it has one yellow cost attached to it so now you don't so when this comes to effect you don't just draw one for free to and play a skillless you now have to pay one yellow to do that which is neutering the card so much uh that is good that what all yellow is going to do is move on to another yellow leader now so that's basically what yellow does and for his activate battles ever skill it's now restricted to just just on your turn so if it's your turn so no longer it was combo on either player's turn uh, monster card to draw one it's now only in your turn you get that so you only get the draw two in your turn but you've got at least um pay one energy one yellow energy to do it so it doesn't inherently draw on its own 
And on your opponent's turn, you can't combo a monster card to get a draw on your opponent's turn either. So that's a really hindered the power of the deck, but the reason why they did that is because the leader provided a draw advantage that significantly significant, uh, so significantly outpaces all other leaders and with no real downside and in order to balance the selection of yellow leaders in the overall meta game they decide they're out of this. But that doesn't really do much for what they're trying to do here because now people just move on to a never yellow leader because really any yellow deck is just a yellow saiyan leader that does the best at drawing and gaining advantage that's a yellow saiyan and then um, they move on the next one so with this gone, just going to move on to new ones like there's the upcoming Trunks and Vegeta one. You've got the Zamasu Wish Leader if you want to go for the Wish stuff. And you also have two other old Saiyan leaders being the Go Tanks from set, I think, 11 or 10? I can't remember which one it is. And even the uh, Broly BR Yellow Leader, which is still a good option. So, even th even though they're trying to balance the selection of Yellow Leaders, they're now, they're, all they've done is make it so this leader gets thrown away and a new one gets uh, selected to be the best one of the format so not uh, no, not much difference there the next one we have Son Goku True Fighting Spirit and the only thing they've done to a this is unique and the reason for that is because this card's auto ability is proven overly oppressive preventing your opponents from forming defensive strategies while multiple cards are in play and in order to properly balance this card they put a rat unique on it so you can only control because what unique is, is you can only control one copy of this card on the board at any given time and that's very good because this auto is all about is if you need a card as a black sand card when your opponent activates a counter skill no matter if it's counter play, counter attack or counter counter they choose one card hand and send it to warp so that means if you get multiple on these boards so if you can get two on the board and you attack and your opponent uses a counter and most of the counters they use are ones that you like negate the attack by discarding card and um, using it as a floodgate you basically just uh... yeah so um... if you if you do end up having multiple of these on board and you do negate the attack, like most negates that you use a floodgate negates, they normally like cost one or two and you've got to discard a card or hand or do something to gain that floodgate. And with Gochi is you having multiple of these on board, it essentially made it so they got paid the cost for whatever one, they got to tap the energy, they got uh, or take the life for whatever negate they're using. Um discard do any other effects discarding cards if you need to. Then for every single one of these you have on board, they have to warp one card from hand. And then if it's a like floodgate negate like Oceanus, Topo, or the Abu or anything like that that plays itself to get the effect, it then gets met with a super coming how to stop it from playing. So they didn't play the card, they paid the energy for it. They discard if they need to discard, and they also warped Lozies out and just negate that one attack, but it didn't do anything else. So it's just very oppressive. And especially in blue against blue, this card was oppressive just because blue has quite a few negates that are valid and just making them lose more cards for using their negates to defend himself is pretty strong. So having unique on this is a good thing and does not really impact. If you still play four in the deck, just means you can only have one on board at a time. So it doesn't impact Gochi Center that much, just curbs down on their um like some crazy plays they could do. So now we have the next one being Black Smoke Dragon offering destruction. So this is one that basically just made it so now both of its skills, its activate main and its marker skill, now require to have a demon realm race card as their uh, to trigger that effect. So no longer can any other deck use this now, it's got to be used by a demon realm race. So I think the first one needs to make a Gabur lead, I can't remember because it's, it's been a ratter twice now to make it so it can't be used with every any deck, it's only used with uh, certain decks. So I said, it just now the leader is, if your leader is a demon realm race, it's added to the minus one. And the reason behind this is because it's minus one marker ability being usable by any leader led to undesirable interactions as well concerns for future card design. I didn't know where that is, but <laughs> but there could be like a drop area if they wanted to make a drop area f themed uh, deck. This hinders it being splashable and everything. And therefore decided to issue an errata to its minus one ability while also keeping the previous errata from August 6th, 2021. So it's just had two arrests just to make it so it's locked to, it's locked only being used by a certain kind of lead. And that doesn't really hurt the Gogeta as I know, or well, it hurts any deck that wants to have this. It hurts the generic ability of this card to be used of anything to help with um, drop area focused uh, decks or strategies. But it doesn't really hurt Kuchita Zeno that much because they've got two other unisons they can use to bring up with the Kai, being um, either the Mirror or the Pycon. And this was just help, used to help against things like Cell Zeno and stuff, or like Icarus, 
with um they're like Icarus with its um skillness by getting rid of that drop so they can't bring it back with a leader of free free uses of that. And against Cell Surge when they put like Ribrians and apes and stuff into the drop, things that they want in the drop to use, getting rid of them so they got less use of that. And now they're now they're both the new are gone. It doesn't matter this is card can't be used again because it's no longer uh needed. And then we have the next one being the Debor, uh, a rat on Debor, and this is nothing special, this is just where they didn't QA the card properly, didn't check it before actually properly printing, and realised the text was wrong in it. So if you look at the last line of text on the activate, first activate main, um, it says send that card its owner's warp. So it's basically missing the two after card, so it should be sending that card to its owner's warp. And it's just letting us know that uh, it should have that two there. So nothing special for that. Then the last one we have is an errata to the Vegeta, so another card that's not out yet, that they um, didn't, once again, QA or proofrate to make sure the text is correct. And basically what the change here is that um, it's to change the choose up to one, to choose one. So the activate panel, as you see it says, is that once per turn, choose up to one red or green, uh, sorry, red or blue saying card in your hand and discard it. It's no longer choose up to one, so you can choose not to discard and just gain advantage that way. Then now you have to choose one to discard. So it makes it worse than it, like it wasn't the best when it came out, it was alright, getting that uh, double draw on the awakened side, like on your turn and uh, draw uh, some advantage from your opponent's turn. Now it no longer has that, so now it's not as good. Like now, if you were to use the like ramp stuff for blue, like using the Gogeta stuff, you just stick to using the blue Gogeta leader instead. Like this Gave a little bit of advantage over that by getting that advantage, which wasn't great. It was alright, but it wasn't great. And now they've basically just made it so it's not worth really getting. I was going to try and see if I can get a uh, win a winner stamp one when the pre-release happened, but now I, yeah, I don't need to bother anymore. But that's it. That's all the um, news for today. We got the Game Fest events. Uh, as I said, the link down below will be. I'll have the link down below for the uh, link to where you can find the dates in your region because I've only got the UK ones up here. And also, for any ones I can find for the UK where you can buy tickets to go to them, I'll put them down below. So if you're looking to it, buy the tickets now, because like, they probably will fill up because they're such good events. Like the last uh, in-person big event we had, the big store champs we had, filled up really quickly. And these, I'm guessing, will do as well. But also, they're in-person, which people want, and it's going to be good to play in person again. So once again, thank you for watching. Feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below if you have if I got anything wrong or anything. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I've gone over, I'm happy to discuss it, start a conversation. Or if there's anything you want me to cover on the channel, feel free to let me know. And lastly, feel free to subscribe. It keeps me up. To, it keeps you updated with my videos as and when they drop. Helps me get to my goal of a thousand subs, which I'm currently just over a quarter away there. And if you do subscribe, you can click the notification bell to receive alerts and updates for when my videos do drop. So once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.